गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी माई सेल्फ जिमिश पाठक एंड विथ मी इज माई कलीग मिस्टर यासीन मंसूरी एंड वी आर फ्रॉम द श्रीमती एस एम पंचाल साइंस कॉलेज माइक्रोबायोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट टूडे द टॉपिक ऑफ आवर डिस्कशन इज द रेगुलेशन ऑफ लाइसोजेनी सो द बेजिक द ओवरऑल कंटेंट्स ऑफ अवर टॉपिक तो मित्रों तब जी सको स्लाइड पर दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे रेगुलेशन ऑफ लाइसोजेनिक नेक्स्ट प्लीज द अवर टॉपिक मेनली इंक्लूड्स द फॉलोइंग डिटेल्स दिस डिटेल्स आर द बैक्ट्रोफाजिस इट मेनली इंक्लूड्स इट्स डेफिनेशन structure of bacteriophages its various types and how such bacteriophages are discovered it also includes various stages of its life cycle of bacteriophages like the lysis the another important stage which is the main focus of our discussion is the lysogeny and then some of the important events which are related with this lysogeny are the induction and another event immunity the other contents which are related mainly though the our topic is the regulation so it mainly depends on the genetic organization and the gene arrangements so it includes the genome various components of this genomes and the structure of the typical bacteriophage genome also we'll discuss what is the genetic network means how the various genes of bacteriophages are interacted with each other and ultimately the main topic of our discussion how together all these genes can regulate the process of lysogeny so and at the last we'll discuss the references which we have included for our today's discussion so first of all before we learn the concept of lysogeny though it is observed basically in the bacteriophage viruses so first we should have an idea what is a bacteriophage so as you can see on the slide phage is a virus and the word phage comes from a greek word phage in means to eat so bacteriophage are the phages that multiply inside any bacteria by making or use of some or even all the host biosynthetic machinery now examples which are the main examples of such bacteriophages so basically it includes the lambda phage where is t family of phages so like t2 t4 t7 and ms2 these are the some of the examples of typical bacteriophages now we must have an idea regarding the structure of a lambda phage so lambda phage is a typical bacteriophage and its structure is like this so basically as you can see on the screen the structure is mainly composed of the various parts like the head then it is connected with the tail and with the help of a component which is known as collar the tail at the end of or at the base of this tail it is composed of various tail fibers which helps any bacteriophage to attach with this host surface or we can say at the cell wall of any bacterium the head mainly contains these regulatory machineries means the dna in case of dna viruses and in case of rna the head mainly contains the rna as nucleic acid material of viruses so overall the head tail 
and base plate is the basic structure of any typical lambda phage or a bacteriophage next please now on the base of its life cycle viruses are mainly showing two types of their growth pattern so on the base of that this bacteriophages can be divided into two parts one which is known as the temperate phage and the typical example of such temperate phage is the lambda phage so now what is the meaning of this temperate means the, these are the phages that can be transmitted from cell to cell by infection or passed from mother cell to daughter cell without damaging the host cell wherein the phage either exist in a latent or in a quiescent form so such type of phages are known as temperate phages now on the contrary the other type of the bacteriophage is known as virulent phages and the example of such typical virulent phages is lambda phage as well as the t phages now what is the difference so here they can cause host cell to lies means the host bacterial cell is broken open or we can say lysed and destroyed after immediate replication of viruses so such type of viruses or bacteriophages are known as virulent phages now we must have idea what how such viruses or bacteriophages were first discovered means the role of the various eminent scientists who gave their contribution in the discovery of such bacteriophages so first of all in in the very past in year around 1896 the scientist like hanbury hankin so they reported that something in the water of the river ganga and yamuna is capable of treating the diseases like cholera means they have some antibacterial activity but they were failed to found that object that component because even that component was so small that can easily pass through the filter of porcelain but they have some idea that something is there in the water of these rivers that can cure this cholera and which shows antibacterial activity in the discovery the contribution of other scientists is the very known scientist frederick twort he was the superintendent in the brown institute of london and who discovered that some small agents that infect and kill bacteria but at that time the research or we can say the facilities were not available to show that object who can infect and kill bacteria but they have some idea that something some agent is there which is capable to cause infection even in the bacteria next please okay then the main scientist of the discovery who was a french canadian microbiologist felix d herrel who was working in the very famous pasteur institute of paris who announced the very important facts regarding the bacteriophages and the viruses and he declared that he had discovered an invisible antagonistic microbe which is found in the dysentery bacillus means the bacillus which caused the dysentery and who found some of the evidences of the presence of that viruses in such dysentery bacillus and at the end another scientist mainly the group of scientist means the delbruck horshi and salvador luria and they have performed very vigorous work on the identification and 
on the discovery of viruses and they were awarded the even Nobel Prize for their discoveries for the replication of viruses and its genetic structure. So basically all these scientists well, were gave their efforts in the discovery of viruses. Now the our main topic is the regulation of lysogeny. So before we start this lysogeny we must have some knowledge regarding the important terms which we will discuss or we will use continuously in the next term. So such important terms are as shown in the figure. The first term of importance is the prophage. Now what is this prophage? Means the phage genome integrated into the host bacterial genome is prophage means it is a part of the genome of phage which reacts or interacts with the host bacterial cell. So this interacted phage genome with bacterial genome is known as prophage. This as you can see the figure on your screen the red line shows the structure or the prophage and the second black line indicates the host genome. The another second important term is the lysogen. Now what is lysogen? So any bacterium which carries the prophage is called lysogen means bacteria. It is a bacterium which carries the bacteriophage and that is ultimately known as a lysogen. Next please. Okay, so these lysogens are also means once any bacterial cell is inf infected with this type of bacteriophage, then it will become immune to further infection by the similar type of phage because their functions are repressed. Means once a bacterial cell is infected with a single type of bacteriophage, then that same bacterial cell cannot be infected with the similar type of phages. Next please. The another important factors as we have seen basically the life cycle of this bacteriophage is mainly divided in two parts. Either it will choose the lysis portion or it will choose the lysogeny for its survival and multiplication. So we will start with its life cycle with these two parts. First portion is known as the lysis or lytic cycle. The first step of this lysis is the attachment of that bacteriophage on the surface of a typical bacterial host cell. Then the next step as you can see in the figure indicated with the red line that is the genome of bacteriophage which penetrates inside the host cell and this linear genome is now circularized and then the whole bacteriophage will detach from the host bacterial cell. Now this circularized DNA or the genome of bacteriophage is again using the synthetic machinery of the host cells means it will take up all the control from the host genome and start synthesizing its own machinery. So this step is known as the replication of that viruses then multi assembly of various parts of that viruses like that head, tail, base plates and after the assembly they will form multiple copies or the hundreds of copies of viruses inside the host and once that number of viruses reaches to the definite number they will, they will create tremendous pressure on the host cell and lies that cell wall. So that last step is actually known as the lysis. So overall this lysis process involves as we can see in the figure the attachment, penetration, 
circularization of the genome and then replication, assembly, multiplication and the release of that viruses from the host cell. The second important part of its life cycle is the lysogeny. So here also the first step of lysogeny is very much similar with that lysis means the attachment of the bacteriophage to the surface of the bacterial cell or to the host cell then the penetration of that whole, uh, phage genome inside that bacterial host once again the circularization of that phage genome inside the host cells and detachment of that bacteriophage from the their surface then now these steps in this that phage genome now instead of taking of the control of the bacterial host genome it will attaches to the host genome means it will with the help of various enzymes like integrase enzymes it will attaches with the host genome so this is what the term we have discussed earlier prophage formation is occur then once the prophage is produced it can capable of replicating itself with the host cell means this prophage will move from mother cell to the daughter cell with host genome without get separated from that host bacterial cell and ultimately though it is transformed from mother cell to daughter cell it will not cause the lysis of the host genome so this is what is known as the lysogeny process so this is the basic difference between these two the same process of lysogeny is we can see in form of a linear DNA so the blue line which you are observing on your screen is showing the structure of this bacterial DNA the basic attachment sites is in between the two operons that is galactose and biotin operon and the circular black line you are observing is the genome of this bacteriophage it is having a repressure and due to the presence of that repressure protein actually it will go for the lysogeny instead of lytic cycle so this will integrate with the host cell with the help of integrase enzyme between the galactose and biotin operon so ultimately this step provides the formation of lysogeny and then it will replicate with the host dna so that is what is